raises up a little church to try to preach the truth and try to give the truth of his word, what happens? The devil's come in and cause what? Distraction. Mm -hmm. Drama. <laughs> There's just too much drama every single time you read the book of Acts and you see the Apostle Paul and you see the disciples when they went to preach. Here comes the Pharisees or religious people that come in there and cause drama, turmoil, and strife every single place they went. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Well, look, say, Jesus is no different. He's teaching. He desires to teach. He's the great rabbi. Verse 3, And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman, taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, and this is not out of respect, this is being really smart aleck and just calling him teacher. This woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that, we, that such <laughs> shall be stoned. But what do you say? This said, they said, taking him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had heard them not. Amen. Now when the Bible says God works all things together for the good for those who love him, the Bible's true in that. This woman is caught in sin like every single one of us have been caught in sin. And these Pharisees and these scribes have been caught in sin. Because God sees every single thing we do. Amen. If we're in sin, we're caught. It don't matter if the cameras caught us or some man caught us. So I just caught you. It doesn't matter. You already caught. Mm -hmm. He sees to and fro. He knows our hearts. He knows exactly what's in our hearts and everything at every moment. So we're all caught in sin. Mm. But Jesus, the good thing about this is how he worked all things together for the good. He had those religious Pharisees that was trying to trap him. Throw that blessed little lady in the midst of him. <laughs> she was thrown right there at his feet. There was no better place she could have been thrown. Yeah. What you think about it? The synagogue wouldn't have been good. Don't throw her in the midst of the synagogue because they definitely would have stoned her to death. You know what I mean? Right. But they threw her in the midst of Jesus Christ. Amen. Watch how he works this out. You see, they, they sought to trap him because if he'd have been too lenient, then they could have got him for not obeying the law of Moses according to Deuteronomy 22, 23, where it says to stone the adulterers. But if they were really, really concerned with the law of Moses like they pretended to be concerned, they'd have brought the man too because the man was to be stoned also. You see what I'm saying? But they didn't bring the man. They were trying to trap him in front of the people because the people were starting to pay attention to Christ. And they were jealous. And they were aggravated and angry because Christ was having an effect on the people. So they wanted to trap him in front of all the people and make him say something that would cause him to look like he wasn't who he said he was. That would cause him to either look lenient or too harsh. If he would have upheld the law of Moses and stoned her to death, it would have looked like Jesus had no heart. No mercy. So he was trapped, supposedly. But you can't trap Jesus. I mean, you know that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you love the Lord? Yes. He's so much higher than we are. He, he's so much more intelligent than we are. He, I want you to get this because when you get put in a situation, whatever it may be, in your job, in your life, your relationships, whatever, know that His ways are not our ways. That He can give you knowledge that you cannot even fathom. That you cannot even conceive. Eye has not seen nor ear heard what he has planned for those. Nor has it entered in the heart of man what he has for those, for people who love him. What he has in mind for those. Think about it. He has higher things in mind. You can go to him in any situation and say, Lord, I need wisdom in this situation and understanding. Because anybody else would have been trapped. But Jesus bent down and acted like he didn't hear him. He was drawing on the ground. What do you think he was drawing? I have an inkling. Nobody knows what he was drawing. But James 2.13 says this, For he shall have judgment without mercy, who has shown no mercy. And mercy rejoices against judgment. Did y'all hear that? He shall have judgment without mercy, for who has shown no mercy, 
and mercy rejoices against judgment. If we show no mercy, we're going to get the same judgment that we're judging others with. And we're going to have that kind of judgment put upon us the same measure. However we look at someone's life and look into someone's life. You see, judging doctrine and what's true and, and false is totally different than trying to judge somebody's moral life and what they do. If someone boastfully, pridefully, like it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and 6, the man that was boastful about his relationship with his stepmother, that guy had to be put out of the church because he was boastfully boasting that in front of the whole church. But there are people that's in sin that they're not boastful. They want out. And yet others pick at him and look at him and look deep off in their life. So I'm trying not to look at you, man. <laughs> <laughs> and they point their fingers at him. And they say, well, I didn't go that far. Yeah. Oh, yes, I've been in sin before. But I didn't go as far as so and so. They're really gone. And we start talking. Y'all know what I'm saying? And, 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 and all these Pharisees and scribes, we end up, as we look at them and say, I'd never become like that. We become just like a Pharisee and scribe. And Jesus has been down and, and, and he's trying to draw something for us to see. <laughs> and he's trying to say, okay, I showed you mercy. <laughs> and now you're showing them judgment. And there'll be judgment without mercy for those who show no mercy. I, that scares me. Have you ever thought about that? The judgment of God without mercy? If you don't show mercy, people, we don't want that. When I read that, I got shudders. I mean, I, it, just, it just made my skin crawl. And I said, oh, Lord, please don't let me rise up in pride and think that I'm better than somebody else and start judging somebody's moral character. when They may be falling short. They may be caught up in sin. And they may be crying out every single night trying to come out. Please don't let me go there. Because I don't know their heart. Only He knows their heart. And yes, their fruit may be bad. But all of our fruit have been bad at one time or another. The best way to judge this situation is to look in the spiritual mirror of the Word of the living God. When you look in that mirror yourself and, and, and judge yourself and evaluate yourself before you look at anything else. Because we are to help those who have fallen short. The Word of God is clear on that. It's clear in John and it's clear in James. If you see a brother fall into sin, let those go and help him with the spirit of meekness, humility, that we also not be tempted to fall in that sin. But still, we must evaluate ourselves and see how God showed us mercy. Remember that. That's, that always helps for us to show mercy to another individual, especially those of the faith. We usually kill our own. Have y'all noticed that? Brothers and sisters in the faith, those who are saved that are having a hard time with something, we're the one, we, we grab hold of them and just pick them apart. And our tongue does so much damage. Well, I'm on that. Go to James. Put your finger here. Go to James chapter 3. 